Hey, it's Mickey Live with an introduction to Macromedia Flash MX components. First, we'll learn how to quickly begin a Flash project from a pre-existing template. Then we'll jump right in by adding my favorite scroll bar component to a text field. Then we'll use the combo box component to create a URL drop-down menu. Before we get started, be sure you're seeing the entire movie from edge to edge, including the controller at the bottom. Click the Maximize icon on this browser window so that it fills your screen. Also, to get the most out of this tutorial, be sure to take your time. Stop the movie and follow along with me as I guide you through the exciting world of Macromedia Flash MX components. With a new file open, let's start by opening the template we created in the first movie, Introduction to Flash MX. From the file menu, choose Open as Template. Here it is our global company in the category list. And over here is the training file. Now click Create. That rocks our beautiful file from the introduction movie. Let's add a few more elements to our timeline before we get going. First, I'll add a new layer for the components. I'll name it something easy to remember, well, like components. Then from the file menu, we'll open as a library the assets file we used in the first movie. Before I borrow the GPS title symbol, I'm going to make sure the title layer is active. I'll put the GPS title right over here. Let's switch our focus to the component layer. Then, drag and drop the component symbol over here. You may need to use the arrow keys to get the graphic in the right place. Perfect! To make this easier to understand, let's break apart the component graphic so that the text and the background panel are separate from each other. From the Modify menu, choose Break Apart. This separates the graphic from the symbol in the library. Now we're ready to rumble. Look at this text! Because of the amount of text, it covers up my other graphics. That's why we need Flash MX Components. Components make creating complex interactions easy. They're also great for creating forms. What's more, they're fun! To fix this text box, we need the scroll bar component. If you don't see the components panel over here, you can open it from the window menu. First things first, you can't apply a scroll bar component to a static text field. So with the text field selected, change the text type menu here from static to dynamic. Once it's a dynamic text field, we must, and I mean must, name it. Start typing down here. I'll name mine scroll for scrolling text. Also, it's vital we change the line type from single to multi-line over here. Here's the really important part. Start by selecting the text tool. Click inside the text field like we were going to do some editing. Now, hold down on the shift key and double click this little box for it to become solid. This allows us to resize the text field even though there's more contents than meets the eye. Be sure to leave room on the right for our scroll bar, just like that. Perfect! Next step, click this triangle to expand the components menu. Drag and drop the scroll bar into our text field. Yes! To test this bad boy, we must, like all complex interactions, go to test movie mode. Here it is on the control menu. Can you say nice? Now close the test movie window. Let's add my second favorite component, the combo box. Simply drag and drop it here into this light blue area. First, to refer to it later via action script, let's name it in the property inspector. I don't know, how about web for websites? Next, let's apply some labels. Double click the Labels field to open the Values window. Then click the plus icon here to add our labels. I'll add four, zero through three. Zero is the default displayed value. I'll give it the value of Web Resources. Label one is Macromedia, two is Flash MX, and label three is another one of my favorites called Fusion. Click OK. Double click on the data field to add data values. We need four values to match our four labels. 
The first is the default, which doesn't link to any site. So I'll leave it blank by deleting this value. 1 equals HTTP www.macromedia.com 2 equals flash.com and 3 equals coldfusion.com Now that we have four matching values, click OK. This is where the fun really begins. We have to get the values from our combo box. If you're not an ActionScript wizard, come along. It will be fun. Right here, this little change handler is where we begin. Change handler is the name of the function that's called when the menu changes. In our case, we haven't created a function yet, but I know what it's going to be called. Let's name it fun for function. As long as we name our function fun when we create it, we'll be okay. A function is just a block of code that we may use more than once. We simply write the code and give it a name. From that point, we never write the code again. We just write the name to call the block of code. In turn, it executes the event. Start by selecting the first frame on the action layer and open the action panel. You can write this function in expert mode or work in normal mode. I'm going to work in normal mode so that you can see where each segment of our code comes from. Getting the function script is the first step. It's inside the action book and then inside of the using defined functions book. You've got it. Double click to apply the action. Now to name it. Our combo box calls a function named fun. So we better name this function fun if we want everything to work. Name it over here. Click the function down here to add the next line of code. It's get URL. Get URL is also in the action book, but it's nested in this browser book. Double click to apply the get URL command. Over here in the get URL field, we don't want to set it to a literal URL. We want an expression. So, check this expression box right over here. First, what do we want to find out? We want to know which item is selected in our combo box. This is a new set of actions specific to components. So, it can be found in the Flash UI Components book. And, inside you'll find F combo box method get selected item. Double click to apply that action. Yes, the dot here indicates to me that it's looking for a target to get the selected item from. Place your cursor before the dot, then click this target icon down here to see which items are named on the main timeline. Oh yes, here's our combo box on the list. We named it web, right? If you know the name of the component, you can just type it in. But the target window can be helpful to ensure the name and the scope is correct. We just need one more piece. From our combo box, we can get two types of information the label, or the data value. We need the actual web address. That's the data field. So, here it is. After the method, type dot data. Congratulations! For some of you, you just completed writing your first function. Close the action window. Well, we're almost to the end of this tutorial, but before we test our movie, let's scale the combo box. Select the scale tool here. Pull on the side handle here to only scale the box horizontally. Now I know something looks fishy, but what you have to remember about components is what you see on screen is not what's created. The actual component is created when we export the movie or go to test movie mode. The graphic on screen is just a visual placeholder for its properties and its parameters. Finally, we get to test our movie. From the control menu, choose Test Movie. Once again, you're awesome! Be sure to save your work. The next movie starts here. In this brisk tutorial, you learn to begin a Flash MX project from a template. You learn how to apply my favorite component, the scroll bar, and you invoke the power of the combo box. 
Send your comments to moviemail at macromedia.com. With an introduction to Macromedia Flash MX components, I'm Mickey Live.